representative democracy, constitutional monarchy, legislature, executive, judiciary, the Australian political system is filled with jargon, which can often be confusing and can be a barrier to participating meaningfully in politics. Today, we're peeling back the layers of the political onion to uncover the fundamental workings of the Australian political system. My name is Katerina Sullivan, and I would like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. You might be wondering, why bother? Why bother understanding the Australian political system? Well, buckle up, <laughs> because the decisions made in those hallowed halls of the building on the hill directly impact our lives. From the price of your bread and milk to your access to life-saving healthcare, these decisions matter to us. Understanding the intricacies of Australian politics is your key to unlocking your full democratic power as a voter and as a citizen of Australia. And even if you aren't a citizen or you're not yet of voting age, your voice still carries tremendous power when engaging with the politicians who represent you. So let's get started on arming you with knowledge and with power. Australia is both a representative democracy and a constitutional monarchy. What exactly is a representative democracy? A representative democracy is a system in which we elect representatives to make decisions on our behalf. Each Australian citizen of voting age gets one vote. No vote counts more than another. These votes are counted and from here, a representative is chosen. This person represents their voting community in parliament. Your vote is your voice and collectively, our voice shapes the future of this country on election day. Now let's talk about the other term I used earlier, constitutional monarchy. Let's start with that constitutional part. Our political system is governed by a constitution. A constitution is a document containing a set of rules on how the country should run. Australia is part of the Commonwealth, with the British monarch as our symbolic head of state. I say symbolic here as the British monarch does not really get involved in the day-to-day -day running of the country. We call this monarchy above politics. This is different to an absolute monarchy in which the monarch has powers over the state and the government. When you combine these two terms, constitution and monarch, you end up with a system of government in which a monarch, a king or a queen, rules alongside a government which operates based on the rules set out in a constitution. Now, the British monarch is a busy person and probably not across all the intricacies of Australian politics. So how do they still participate meaningfully as our head of state? Enter the Governor General. The Governor General is our representative of the Crown or the Monarch in Australia, with important ceremonial duties and a key role in the functioning of our government. Now, I've used two key terms in talking about our monarchy and our political system. These terms are state and government. These are two different terms for two different functions. It's best understood by looking at the difference between a head of state and a head of government. Have you ever noticed that some countries have both a president and a prime minister? One functions as the head of state and one functions as the head of government. The head of state represents the country, like our monarch or governor general. The head of government runs the show, like our prime minister. Two roles, one nation. Australia is a federation with multiple levels of government. A federation is a group of states who are independent from one another, but share a central government. In our federation, we've got the federal government as our central government. Taking a step from there, we have the state and territory governments. And then another step from there, the local legends who manage things a little closer to home, the local government also known as local councils. It's like a political layer cake, and each layer has its own responsibilities and powers. Within these levels of government, there are three arms of government. The legislature, responsible for making laws. The executive, in charge of implementing said laws. And the judiciary, ensuring those laws are fair and just for everyone, and adhered to. It's a delicate dance that keeps the wheels of democracy turning. In the Australian political system, we have six states and two self-governing territories. But wait, 
There's more. We also have external territories like Christmas Island and the Cocos Islands. Our political family is bigger than you might think. So there you have it, the fundamentals of the Australian political system. We will cover each of these topics in a lot more detail in subsequent episodes of this series. This episode was a bit more of a crash course in some of the foundations of our political system and some of the political jargon you might come across when hearing about, researching or engaging in Australian politics. If you found this episode helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your family, friends, colleagues, teachers and more. Please subscribe to my channel for more content on Australian politics, including future videos on how the Australian political system works. And I'd love to hear from you. Please comment below which topic you're most looking forward to learning about during this series. Remember, understanding the system isn't just important, it's empowering. So let's stay engaged, be part of the conversation, and make our voices heard. In the next episode of this series, we will look at the Australian Constitution, the history of the document, what it sets out, what's changed since it was first written, and the importance of the Constitution in our current political system. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.